All right, we're going to create our project. Our project is kind of like a blueprint for how to get your application to your infrastructure. It's going to take those packages, it's going to have some deployment steps and some configuration variables. It's going to put that all together and use that as instructions on taking your, your applications and moving them through those environments. So let's add a project, give it a name of OctoFX, save that off, Now, before I define my process, I want to go in and talk about configuration variables and set some variables. So configuration variables can be used, or project variables can be used in uh, a few different places, oh, actually quite a, a few different places. Uh, you can use them in your steps when you're configuring them to have different uh, step values used in different environments or different situations. You can also use them to configure your application. So Octopus can, uh, at deploy time, if you're in our case, we're doing ASP.NET, uh, it also works for JSON files and you can configure other file types. But for web config and app config files, it will look at your connection strings and your app settings and look for uh, names or keys that match variable names and you can inject those automatically so you can have Octopus update like your connection string or some app setting for you automatically. So I want to set up my database information. I'm going to do that by adding a few variables. I'm going to add octofx.server, nope, I did it backwards, .database.server. And then I'm going to go find my value for this because it's a database up in Azure. I'm going to get the whole thing. There we go. So you can see I've got a name of a variable and this is, you can name them how you like. Um, I like this format and, and our team kind of likes the same thing where it is the project name then uh, separated by a dot the grouping. Like what does this variable apply to? This is a database variable. And then lastly, the actual variable name. So this is the database server name so octofx.database.server. Uh, you don't have to follow that convention, but uh, as we'll see in a second, the built-in variables that Octopus provides, also it does follow this convention, so it's a nice one to follow because it makes everything kind of look consistent. Uh, and also just kind of helps, like I know what this variable is for immediately by looking at it. All right, let me add. So I'm gonna add that to the list. Let me add another variable. I think we need a database user, that seems, something we need octo admin and i'm just going to add that to the list nothing special there let's do octo fx dot database dot name all right this one's going to be a little bit different i wanted the database name to be octo effects dev but only when i'm deploying to the development environment i don't want that doesn't make sense for production uh I don't want my production database to be named dev. That could be confusing and lead to horrible things down the line. So if I only wanted to be used in the development environment, we can use what we have here called scopes. And you can actually scope this value to a few different things. You can scope it to a specific target, to a specific role or a step within your process. But I think the most common option you choose would be the environment. So I can say, if I'm deploying to development, use this value. And instead of adding it to the list immediately and then adding another value or adding another variable, I want to add another value. So I'm going to do octofx underscore test. And same thing, I'm going to change the scoping. And I say, I only want this value if I'm deploying to the test environment. One more value. We're going to do octofx prod. And this is going to be scoped to the production. I can add that to the list. Now I have a value, I have a variable that has a different value depending on where I'm deploying it to. It's like very, very handy, especially when you have settings that change uh, in your config files that are different, database connection string being one of those. So I think I need one more thing for my connection string and that's gonna be the password, right? You got a user, got to have a password. Now one thing you don't wanna do is just type your password in to plain text into a variable. We have the option to change the type from text to sensitive. And this will make it a password or a sensitive variable. It will give it a password field. You can enter a password in, it'll be masked. 
once we add it to the list and save it, you won't be able to see the value anymore. Octopus is going to encrypt it, store it encrypted in the database. It'll decrypt it during deploy time to use it, but you won't be able to read the value again. You can change the value, but you won't be able to read it again. And I need a full connection string to tie all these together. Um, the, the sensitive variables, that's also not just for passwords, but good for anything that you don't want to be in your config that you want to keep safe. So like API keys uh, is another good use case for those. Anything that you would want to mark sensitive to, that you wouldn't want people to be able to generally see in public. All right. So I mentioned before, we can swap out configuration settings uh, if the name matches the variable name. So I have in my app config and my web config, my connection string is OctoFX database. So no dots, it's not following my dot pattern. That's because this is what it is in my configuration file. So I've got OctoFX database and I'm gonna give it a full value of a connection string. And that's kind of hard to read. So let's open the editor and we can kind of scroll through. Now, what you may notice just jumping out immediately is I've got the server and then immediately after the server, I've got a hash with some curly braces and another variable name, that OctoFX database server that we set up previously. This is the variable substitution syntax within Octopus. So you can actually inject other variables values into other variables, compose a variable from other values. And that's nice because if we scroll down the line, you see database that name is in there. That means when we're deploying to development, it's going to use the dev name. When we're deploying to production, it's going to use the production name. But I only have to have one connection string. If we go further down, you'll see the user is injected and also the password. So that's that's really nice because I had to mark the password as sensitive. If I put the password directly in. Uh, the connection string, I would have to mark the whole connection string as sensitive and that would not be a great experience. Uh, I can also have different passwords per environment, which is more likely also different usernames. But I didn't have to set up three different connection strings. I could set up one connection string and just set up the smaller pieces that compose it. So that's a great, great feature to use that variable substitution within other variables. Now I've got one more variable to set up before we jump into setting up our process. And this is gonna be a trading site variable and this is gonna be the name. And I just wanna set this up to show off some of the built-in variables. So we have a number of built-in variables that you can use during the deployment. Uh, a lot of them, or one of them is uh, based on the environment. So I can actually take the environment name and put it into this value. So at deploy time, this will be octofx-development, octofx-test, or octofx-production. Uh, so that's one of the many built-in ones. Uh, so I'm just gonna show that off, save that. Okay, so a small set of variables. We've set up our database connection string. We've set up something for our website and you can, like I said, you can have many, many variables, as many as you need, but for today, this is going to be enough for our project. Our next step is to define our deployment process. So this is a series of steps where we start connecting a lot of these pieces. We're gonna go in and add a step to deploy a package. Uh, the three pack, actually we're gonna add three steps that all deploy a package, those packages that we uploaded earlier. Now you can see there are other categories. So if you're deploying to Kubernetes, if you're using Terraform, those categories are there for you to explore. Once you select a category, it's gonna give you all the steps that match uh, that category. So we're gonna to stick to the first three here. We're gonna deploy a website to IS. We're gonna deploy a Windows service. But first we're gonna deploy our database, which is a generic deploy a package step, which is really the building block that most of those steps are built on. So we're going to give it a name, deploy database. And yep, we want to leave it enabled. It's going to run, uh, package steps have to run on deployment targets. So we can tell it, now we tell it how and where to run. So we choose the role. We want this to run on our database roles. So this is connecting our project to our infrastructure. When I deploy to development, it's going to run this step on any target with the database role. 
And then we say, well, what do you want to run? What package do you want to deploy? I want to run and deploy my database package. And then there's some default options. You can, uh, like I mentioned, by default, we have the variable substitution and config transforms turned on. Uh, you can turn those off, you can modify those. Uh, the transforms, I don't think I've went in detail yet, uh, but we can do that now. So also by default, Octopus will run your config transforms for you. So if you have an app setting, an app.config or a web.config, if you have a web.release.config, that will automatically run on every deployment. And if you have web.environmentname.config, so web.development.config, web.test.config, those transforms will run at deploy time if the name matches that environment, which is really great because that means you can put all kinds of different things into your configuration transforms, uh, other variable transformations, remove like your debug settings and your release one, and Octopus will handle that at deploy time for you. Uh, you can also add in some other features, one in particular, and a lot of them have to do with the steps that are coming up, but the one I wanted to just talk about briefly is these custom deploy scripts. And this is what I mentioned looking at the database package. There's actually three custom deploy scripts. There's pre-deployment, deployment, and post-deployment. So you can put this in line, that PowerShell to run the database executable. You could put that in line in your step as a deployment script but we already have it in our package as deploy.ps1. So Octopus is gonna run that for us. There's no need for us to put it in line here, but you can do it either way. So it's very flexible. Uh, you can choose which way is ready for you. You can start out by putting it in line and then maybe move it to a file and source control later. We also support more than just PowerShell. You can use C Sharp, uh, Bash if you're going to Linux, and also F Sharp and Python. So you don't have to stick to PowerShell. You can use another, another language to do your deployment scripts. So let me turn those off because I don't need those. And other than that, the defaults are going to work for us. So we're going to save this off and go back to our process. And we'll see that we have one step, deploy database. It's going to tell us the package is taking and it's going to tell us that it's running on roles of octofx.database, exactly what we want. So let's take one more. Well, two more, but one more first. We're going to deploy a Windows service. Same thing, we're going to call this deploy rate service. And steps are going to be very similar. We're going to set up uh, the role. We want it to run on the rate service role. We want it to run our service package. And this one has a few extra options. We can set up the Windows service. So we can set up the service name, which I think I want to be OctoFX great service, something simple, uh, display name, I want something similar. And I didn't set up a variable for this, but you can also inline, we have insert a variable as an option. So you can see variables that we've already created as part of our project right at the top. Or you can scroll through and see we have a lot of built-in variables. So you probably wanna search for the one you're looking for, environment.name. So OctoFX rate service dash environment name will be the display name. As for the executable path, let's remember it's octofx.rateservice.exe. I don't need any arguments passed to it. I can change the startup information and configuration, but the defaults are fine, so I'm not gonna change any of this. Uh, and I do want it to run the configuration variables and transform, so I am good to save this step. So that step, it will extract our package and then Octopus will configure the Windows service for us based on those values we put in. So one last step, and it's gonna be deploy to IIS. It's gonna look very similar in the beginning. So we're gonna say this is deploy trading site. We're gonna choose our trading site role, choose our trading site package. And then we, instead of win, uh, Windows service options, we have IIS options. So for my case, I want it to run as a website. You can change it to a virtual directory or web application. I want to give it a website name. In this case, we created a variable for that, so I can just inject that there, copy that. Uh, so because the root of my package is the, is the website, then the physical path option is the same. If you have it in a subdirectory, you can use a relative path. I do want it to start the website for us. And the application pool information, I just want to use the same name, D 
defaults look fine to me. You can set your bindings. By default, it's going to bind to port 80, but you can add SSL and certificates or different ports to your bindings. I'm going to leave the defaults. The one thing I will change is changing from Windows authentication to anonymous. Uh, that always bites me. Sometimes I forget that, so good thing I didn't this time. And then our default configuration variables and transforms. We want those to run. We want that connection string variable to be replaced in our application so that it works. And that should work. So we're going to save it. If we go back and look at our process, we see that we've got Three steps now, deploy a database, deploy a rate service, and the trading site gives us all the information we need.